According to the fifth assessment report of uh, the Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, that is the IPCC, a lot of the heat due to greenhouse gases, mainly carbon dioxide, has gone into the oceans. That is around 90% of the heat from this greenhouse gas uh, radiative forcing. If you look into the tropics, you can see that the Indian Ocean has warmed up much faster in a monotonous sense compared to the other tropical oceans like the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean. And when you say faster, it means that uh, over the Indian Ocean, the warming is up to the surface warming is up to almost 1.2 degrees Celsius during the last century, especially over the Western Indian Ocean. And if you look at the all Indian Ocean, it's warming up to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 degrees Celsius. It has warmed up to 0 0.6 degrees Celsius during the past decade with a significant warming over the Western Indian Ocean. The El Nino or the El Nino Southern Oscillation acts differently on the Indian Ocean. So when you have El Nino, you have weak, west, uh, weak southwesterly or southwesterly monsoon winds during summer, during the boreal summer. And because you have the weak winds during summer, this leads to less release of heat energy from the ocean through evaporation. So the ocean gets more warm. And this warming in the uh, Indian Ocean persists for a longer time due to several reasons, due to local ocean atmosphere interaction, due to the fact that the Indian Ocean is locked up uh, over the north, and several other reasons. Because of climate change, the oceans are warming, the land is also warming, and it is possible that the global greenhouse gas warming has altered the monsoon drivers. For South Asia, uh, one of the major drivers for the monsoon is that in summer, the land warms much larger than the uh, ocean which is proximate, that is the Indian subcontinent, the South Asian subcontinent warms faster or, or larger and the ocean is, the relative warming is much less. So there is a land-sea thermal contrast and this thermal contrast drives the monsoon flow towards the land. Now once the monsoon sets in, once the rains come on to the Indian subcontinent, the rain cools down the land. It releases a lot of latent heat energy from the land, but this energy is related to the release to the atmosphere over the land. So the air over the land still remains warm. So even after, after the monsoon sets in, the grass is alive. So this keeps the monsoon going on throughout the summer from June to September almost. But what we have found is that uh, this monsoon driver is changing. So uh, across the globe scientists and uh, researchers have shown that the northern hemisphere is warming much faster than the southern hemisphere or the land is uh, gaining much more heat on the surface than the ocean. But if you look at the uh, Indian Ocean, the scenario is different. Trajectory to what studies have shown for the old northern hemisphere where land is warming faster than the ocean, we find that over the South Asian domain, the ocean is warming 
much larger and rapid than the Indian subcontinent. So this has kind of decreased the land sea contrast, the walking, the monsoon driver in the recent decades over the South Asian domain. So we find that the uh, warming over the Indian Ocean along with the suppressed warming over the land has resulted in a kind of weakening monsoon driver resulting in weakening of or reduced rainfall over some regions of India. If you consider the Indian Ocean, the Western Indian Ocean is one of the regions which is the most biologically productive regions. So it has a lot of phytoplankton production over the Western Indian Ocean because it is an upwelling region uh, because of the monsoon winds which drive the subsurface nutrients, uh, mixing it with the surface and providing nutrients for the phytoplankton over that region. The Western Indian Ocean is also one of the uh, major suppliers of tuna to the global fishery market. Uh, for example, the big eye tuna, which is the most, one of the most viable, economically viable tuna species uh, in the global fish market, around 20, more than 20 percent of that is exported from the Western Indian Ocean. The surface warming makes the water over the surface less dense. It is more lighter and the subsurface is more heavier or denser. So when you have lighter water above the heavier water, it prevents mixing. Why mixing? Because the nutrients, the nitrates, the phosphate, the silicate and all these nutrients which are essential for phytoplankton, they are, uh, they are like plants, they are the marine plants. They need these nutrients for their survival. So the nutrients doesn't get mixed when the density of the surface water is less. That's called stratification. So the oceans get more stratified, there is less mixing and uh, eventually there is less phytoplankton production. Now with the uh, recently available uh, satellite data over uh, last two decades and with the availability of historical simulations from climate models, we are able to uh, simulate the effect of this ocean warming on marine phytoplankton and we, we find that the ocean warming has played a major role on that. Now if you look at the uh, long term history of the tuna catch rates, you can see that there is a sharp decline in the tuna catch rates. What the ocean warming and the decrease in phytoplankton can do is add up the pressure, the stress on the phytoplankton and the fish. So, so the ecological stress on the fish species is getting larger which can due to which can lead to much more depletion in both the phytoplankton and the fisheries and eventually affect the uh, humans on the land as well.